We're here to uh, get the schools and dare and the police to stop telling the lies to the children. It's like the little boy that cried wolf once too often. He paid a heavy price for that in the end when the wolf did show up. And they're lying to the children. They're not listening. Because why would I believe you if you're going to lie to me? Uh, Portugal, for one, legalized, or decriminalized drugs in 2001. Now, the prohibitionists will tell the kids and, and the public that, oh, the drug users are going to go there, the drug dealers are going to go there to, to supply those drug users. But actually, in Portugal, they now have double the rate of people going in for treatment and their drug use has gone down. So that's, you know, one of the lies. And we also hear the lies about the cannabis today is stronger than it was in my day when I was younger. And that's also untrue. And if it was true, as they are stating that it creates psychosis, we would have a lot more people. The numbers would be much higher in psychosis being reported, which is not happening. And we've also had hash forever, which is a very strong derivative of cannabis. The science. Well, the Dane, uh, the Dane Commission in 1972 said to be legalized. The 2002 Special Senate Committee on Illegal Drugs said that it should be legal for 16 years old and older. I would like to see people not consume drugs at all, but that's not going to happen. We know that. And people seem to have forgotten that alcohol is a hard, nasty, harmful, killer drug. Is, are we going to prohibit that? Well, of course not. It doesn't work. So we've got to remember that these are drugs, and they are hard drugs, but other than cannabis. Cannabis does not kill. And we need to get that message out there. There is medical cannabis, and it does help a lot of medical people. We have medical exemptions here tonight that are uh, health Canada exempt to consume medical cannabis legally. Now, I don't know <laughs> That's right, they sure do. And it's the same thing with alcohol in, in the 1930s. We had speakeasies, we had people going blind from bathtub, bathtub gins. We need a regulated market. We need the government to take it over and have a regulated market so the purity and everything is taken care of properly instead of just some drug dealer on the street that's gonna deal to a 10-year-old, a 12-year-old, a high school student. They don't care who it is but the government regulates alcohol, don't they? We have to be 18 and older, and, and if we're feeding alcohol, a very harmful drug, to children, we are gonna be punished for that. So we need to regulate them, stop this. Look at Portugal, like I said, in 2001. They decrimmed all drugs, right up to heroin, and now their drug rate's going down, and they've got double the amount of people in treatment. So that says a lot in itself. Well, because of the stigma that's uh, attached to drugs, when you hear that, Dog, the bounty hunter fellow running around. These, they're evil and they're bad. It's sure they do steal, they do to get their drugs and that. But if we can provide a place where they can get pr proper quality drugs that are do have a good quality, do have, are regulated, lower the price to them. And I ask you, would you today go into the drugstore and buy heroin if it was legal and you could buy it at the drugstore? Most people tell me no. I haven't really had. Yes, I am. I actually consume for medical reasons now. I took a pharmaceutical drug for one year. I ended up in the hospital because it almost killed me. It shrunk my muscles and they pulled away from the bone. I worked my whole life. I'm now 50. And I had to give up work to go on disability because of a pharmaceutical drug taking it for one year. Oh, if we legalized cannabis, it would be much better for everybody. The, the medical people could get it, uh, we could, and we could show people that cannabis is a safer drug than, say, alcohol, pharmaceuticals, cigarettes. It's killed no one. You can't physically consume enough cannabis, smoking it, eating it, to kill yourself. At worst, you'll throw up and go to sleep and have a really great sleep and get up the next morning very refreshed. So you think that people are going to do it anyway? No, it's the science. I don't think it. I'm not, it's not a biased opinion. It's the science. It's the drug studies. I've got information where drug studies go from 1894 right until this day and time. 2008, March 8 was the last one. They all say legalized drugs. The prohibition of cannabis, at least, is causing more harm than the plant or the drug it, it, it itself. Because they're throwing people in jail, the Bill C-15 mandatory minimums, like in the U.S., are backing away from their mandatory minimums for 30 years. They have 5% of the world population in the U.S. and 25% of 
of their population are in jail today. 60 to 70 percent are for simple possession. Their, drug, their jails are overflowing. But because it's a private system, jail system, that I've heard Harper wants us to have, because of his mandatory minimums he's trying to bring in, they can fill these jails up with peaceful, non-violent offenders. That way it's much cheaper, you need lots and lot less guards, and you make much more money from the rich corporations. But with cannabis, if we taxed it, regulated it, in BC alone it's a six to seven billion dollar a year industry. The taxes alone cost all of these $50 billion deficits that the finance minister announced today. We could put an end to that just by legalizing cannabis and not creating any harm that we are creating in prohibition, as the 2002 Senate Committee says. That's government science, too. A lot of people say that they start with the pot, Well, gateway theory is, is very common. The only way that cannabis is a gateway drug is you get involved with an unscrupulous dealer on the street, one again that doesn't care who he sells to, He's there for profits. Hey, guy, I've got some more drugs here. Try these drugs. So they get exposed to these drugs. If we had compassion clubs like, like in Edmonton, or Calgary doesn't, unfortunately, for medical cannabis, or coffee shops like in Toronto, paper lounges, where people could go in and select, I want this little bit of cannabis. They know it's organically grown. They know it's clean. They go home and enjoy their cannabis, and all is good. They don't beat up their wife. They, they can't OD on it. They, they don't sexually assault people and that's what happens with alcohol. It's, it is an evil, nasty drug and it kills and it does create a lot of crime and harm, but we can't prohibit it. We tried that in the 30s and we got Al Capone and that's what we got today is like violent gangs because of profits. And if we could just legalize cannabis alone, we could take a huge dent out of their profits. That way, planting a seed, that's all it takes. It doesn't need to be manufactured like alcohol or meth or any other drugs. You plant a seed, let the sun grow it, harvest it and smoke it or eat it or have a tea or even vaporize it, which is one of the most healthy ways to consume cannabis today. Thank you, guys.